Hi, this is Travis Hall with Splunk. I'm one of the consultant solution engineers that supports public sector. So in this video, I'm going to cover a dashboard I built that looks at NetFlow data and shows me the activity in my home lab. Now, you may ask yourself, you know, how did I get that NetFlow data in? And what I've done is I've configured my OpenSense firewall to send NetFlow data to my Splunk environment. Now I'm using the free app, Splunk app, you know, Splunk stream app that you can go out and download from Splunk base. Um, and we have documentation and an easy way to find the documentation and blog posts is go out to Google and do a simple search Splunk documentation stream NetFlow. And then, you know, click on, there's a blog post or click on this one here for the documentation where it goes over how to configure and install, you know, the stream forwarder. And that's what I do is you know, I set up OpenSense to send it over to an independent stream forwarder that then puts it into my uh, index using, I believe, the HTTP event collector. It's been a while since I've set it up. So other things that you're going to need for this dashboard, and I'll cover that first, is another visualization called network topology visualization. So if I go out to splunkbase.splunk.com and do a search on network topology, and you can see I just put network top and it comes up there at the top one. <laughs> and so here I'm going to click on that, log in, download, and then go into your Splunk environment and then install the app via the, you know, install app via file. The other app that you're going to need add on Apps are usually visualizations. Add-ons are a way to, you know, bring the data in. But another add-on app that you're going to need is the Network Toolkit, and this is uh, this is created to help people to do um, who is pings, trace routes, DNS lookups, all within Splunk. You can actually come over here, click details, and go to Luke Murphy's uh, website and get information more about how to use this network toolkit for Splunk. And here is, you know, using search commands where ping Google, trace route, who is, and this is uh, the command I will be using in that dashboard where I do a who is on IP addresses. So let's get back to that dashboard and start showing you the capabilities. So here I'm going to start with a very simple time chart. I'm using line that shows the average megabytes in per device. I have a lookup sheet that I've created that helps me translate the 192.168 IP addresses over to a name. So I don't have to remember what IP address my TV has. And which you can see usually my heavy hitters in my house are the TVs. And you can start seeing trends like when everybody goes to sleep and nothing's going on. Uh, here we had a little bump at the night at 4 a.m. So let's click on that and, and find out more what's going on at 4 a.m. on my Ubuntu HTTP server, which that's part of my me learning Kubernetes, which that could be another video for another day. Anyway, this is that network topology custom visualization. The visualization does require five columns or five fields to be, you know, used. You, I mean, you can't have four, you have to have five. You can't have six. I mean, it literally needs five. And what I may do is just set up another video about how to play with this, you know, visualization and utilize it. I think that'd be a good idea, but I'm not going to do that today. But here, you know, you can see my Ubuntu server. I can drag this around. That is a cool little feature I like, you know, and starts, you know, just bringing things out. And, you know, here's one of my my uh, internal IPs and the host name. But if you notice, this says outside. I did a simple fill no value. If it doesn't have a value for a destination underscore host, call it outside, which I'll show you when I open open up the source editor and show you the searches or if you go download I am going to post this um, XML up on Ghost Splunk if you have never seen Ghost Splunk I highly recommend that 
Um, Ghost Splunk is a great site that is built by a Splunker for Splunkers, and it's basically a repository for queries and dashboards that Splunkers have built that they wanted to share out to people. You know, come out here and do a simple search on, you know, if you need to find something on Windows and click go, bam, now it will do a search and show you all the different dashboards and searches that people have built, queries that people have built. Uh, I have actually um, posted anything that says T-Hall, that is myself. Um, I have posted uh, quite a few dashboards and I will be posting more. And one of my favorites is, is find the password in the username field. But enough about that, let me get, you know, I can get uh, sidetracked real easy. Um, but here, here is that visualization, HTTP, here's all the devices that are, you know, sending data to it. Uh, at the same time, when I click the little bump here that created this visualization to show up, and you can see there reviewing HTTP, Ubuntu HTTP, I have a couple other panels down here that I hadn't scrolled down to yet. Now, this is a field selector. I have it hard-coded to only a certain amount of fields. You know, you can click in there and add more fields. It'll rerun this panel to give you those fields if you would like. Uh, if you click, and I always put the source IP up front, I don't think you can subtract source IP. If you want to change that, once you download it, do whatever you want. Um, but anyway, once you click on source IP, it's going to use that network toolkit, who is command and do a who is on that IP address to give you pages of information of where this, you know, who owns this IP address. And as you can see, we have Conical-AS, you know, probably some streaming provider or whatever. I, you know, I can go start digging into more information about that. Now what I, I am going to show you is, uh, I mean, a quirk about the uh, network topology custom visualization you know I clicked on a small bump but what happens when I click on you know a bigger you know bump in the road here if you have like this one was only a few IP addresses however this up here is one of my TVs Samsung TV that my kids use quite often um, yeah the visualization is going to take a little bit to render and there's a lot going on here and Samsung what are you doing so I have the TV here if you move this it's going to re-render it all so this is a very active over you know a lot of information here overload what I can do is say hey I don't want to bring in these th you know usage levels and that's just a simple eval I don't know if I talked about that yet, but the eval here to help me build out uh, usage, I'll show that off, or if you download it, you'll see it yourself. Um, same thing, I can drag this around and see you know, my heavy hitters. And this visualization will allow you to change the colors, even make them dotted lines or solid lines. You can have fun with it. And the same thing, I can come down here and click on an IP address and understand what that is. And so enough about you know, how to use it or, you know, what it looks like, but let's get into how to get it working into your environment. So I'm going to come up here and click edit. And I've already told you that there's two add-ons that you need to go out to Splunk Base and download and have installed before you can do this. You know, the network topology, custom visualization, and uh, network toolkit. I'll make sure to have links in the video information to those so it make it a little bit easier for you to download. Um, I have a time range picker set up here. Um, you will see that I have post process labeled for this view. Uh, this is the second time I built this view. I built a, a view without post processing and then I wanted to build one with post processing because I think it's more efficient to do it with a post processing and if you don't have a clue what post processing your dashboards is, um, you can have a dashboard with multiple panels and each one of those panels can contain a single search. So if you have eight panels with eight searches, that's eight searches that you run when you open that dashboard. So instead of doing that, I can have one search that populates eight panels. 
and I'll go more into that when I go into the source code here. So I am using post-processing in this dashboard. Um, if you haven't built dashboards before, you know, I plan on making another set of videos to help, you know, understand how I build dashboards. I haven't done it at the time of this recording, but I will, I promise. So here we can click on edit search. You'll notice that there is no base search, you know, index equals net flow data. I mean, this is a post process. This is a child of my parent search, my base search. So what I'm going to do is pivot over to the source and show you the source behind the GUI there. And at top here, and that's where I usually like to put it right after the label, is I have a search ID and I call it NetBase1. Um, and I always put a one just in case if I want to put multiple searches or, you know, base searches in one dashboard, you know, you'll, you'll learn how to do this once you start practicing. Uh, but we have the search ID and this is our base search. And then here from query to query is the base search that powers the different panels in this dashboard. And when you uh, bring this into your environment and if you have NetFlow data or if you want to use maybe, you know, Cisco, Palo Alto or some other source, uh, you'll have to make this change for index equals net flow. And if I do a control F, that is the only spot in this whole dashboard that I use index equals net flow open sense. And I'll even, uh, I'm going to close this back out and even highlight index equals and do a control F and you can see over there. Yeah. Only one, only spot. So this base search looks in my index net flow open sense, put all my data there. And then I only look at my destination IPs. I want to see where data is going in my network for this view here. And then I do a stats count. And this is important when you're building out post-processing. All the fields that you want to use, you know, this is the parent search, the base search for all the children. That, and in the fields you want to use inside of those children's searches, you have to make sure you have your fields here is if you don't, they won't be available to your other searches, to your children's searches. Um, time, and I don't know how many times that I've done it, where I forget to put underscore time in, then I go to try to build a time chart and then it's not working. I spend five, 10 minutes figuring out why is this not working to go back to my base search and realize, oh, I forgot underscore time. Um, so here, base search, uh, this is the lookup command and the lookup CSV file that I'm using, you know, you'll have to change that. Um, if you don't want to look up sheet or if you don't want to do this, you'll have to figure out something for, um, you know, the other field names in the search. And I'm going to scroll down there for the network topology visualization. Because right here, you can see I have five fields, source IP, source host, destination IP, destination host, and usage. Uh, usage field is created by this eval, where I just do a simple, you know, megabytes in. If it's, you know, less than 0.1, it's low. If it's less than 1, 2.1, it's very low, you know, 5 to 1, medium, and you get the point and then here, you know, yeah, very high, you know, greater than, you know, very high 20. So you will have to, if you don't have a lookup sheet, create another column, you know, play with that, figure out what you want to put there for, you know, column, was it two and four to make that visualization work? Unless you just want to rip that visualization out and just use a table. By any means, do whatever you want. So here, this is the, like I said, the back end of the source code for this uh, dashboard that I built. Those should be, yeah, those should be the only changes that you need to make really from the source code. Everything else you should be able to do from the GUI here. So if I do want to, if I wanted to add another field, actually, 
you know, if you go back here and if there was another field I wanted to add, I would have to add it here first. Then I can go back to the GUI and click on, you know, the pin here and, you know, come down here and add another field. Or, you know, if I don't like pink for this, uh, you know, go back over there. If I don't like pink for this above 20 megabytes, I can actually come click the format visualization, go to link five and change it to purple if I wanted to, or, you know, black, gray, whatever you want. Uh, it will, once you do make that change, it will start re-rendering it and you can see it's black now. Uh, I'm going to leave it pink. So I'm going to change that back. And there we go. So that is how to go in and make changes to this dashboard to hopefully get it working in your environment. Um, the who is, all this does is take a, you know, I told you that I use the drill down tokens. So edit drill down, click value, I call it IP. And if I go over here and click edit search, I mean, that's all it's doing is a pipe who is and the IP. So if I wanted to have a trace route, a ping, you know, I can start adding panels to do all those other commands. Um, yeah. So if, hopefully you've found this video helpful. I will tell you, don't click on dark theme here. I'll show you what happens. Um, with these, with this uh, visualization, all the writing is in black. So if you do go to dark theme, I'll save you the uh, time and refresh so you don't do it yourself. And I'm going to put it for like last 15 minutes. Click submit. So it builds this out a lot quicker for this video. Um, I like dark theme so much better, but I can't read the I can't read that down there. So. Anybody who's more of a programming whiz than I am, you could probably go in there and figure out how to make that white. But yeah, by by default right now, yeah, don't go to dark theme. Leave it on, you know, the normal theme and you should be good to go. All right. Once again, I hope you find this video helpful and uh, I look forward to making more videos.